Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome. You're listening to or maybe watching Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 597. And today, Andrew and I are talking about ratios of black belt or equivalent students versus non-black belt or equivalent students in a martial arts school. Does it matter? Yes, it matters. We're going to talk about why in just a moment. But I'm Jeremy Lesniak, host, joined by co-host Andrew Adams. I'm the founder of Whistlekick. I love traditional martial arts. Andrew loves traditional martial arts. Everybody involved at Whistlekick loves traditional martial arts, and you probably do too if you're checking out our content. Now, if you want to see all the things that we do as a company, go to whistlekick.com, see everything we got going on there. One of the things you will find is our store. And if you jump in the store, you're going to find a bunch of different stuff from apparel to training programs to some equipment, a bunch of different stuff. Use the code PODCAST15. It's going to get you 15% off. Let's us know that you're supporting the show, that you listen to the show, and it lets me tell the accountant, yeah, that actually leads to some sales, which is an important thing to do when you invest what we invest here at Whistlekick. Now, if you want to go deeper on the show, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com is the place to go. You're going to find every episode gets its own page with transcripts, photos, links, notes, all kinds of cool stuff. Check that out there. Sign up for the newsletter, all that good stuff. And if the shows that we bring you, bring you two a week, if those mean something to you, well, there are lots of ways that you can help us out. You can make a purchase, share an episode, follow us on social media. We're at Whistlekick everywhere. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, not TikTok, not Snapchat, but Tumblr. We actually even have a Tumblr account. You could tell a friend about us. You could pick up one of our books on Amazon. You could leave a review or you could support the Patreon. Patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Whistlekick. Patreon's a place where we post stuff that we don't post anywhere else. You can go behind the scenes on this show, all kinds of cool stuff. And entry starts at two bucks a month. So think about it. Help us offset the cost of this show. Uh, I'm trying to think of some of the last things that we've done. I've got it today or tomorrow. I'll be writing an, uh, a post about upcoming guests and the things that we've got coming, who's coming in what order, reactions to episodes, and honestly, it is the most direct line to having influence on who we talk to and what we talk about. So if that's of interest to you, that's the best place to do it. So Andrew, black belts or equivalent, let's, let's say senior students, however we want to term that, because it is different in different schools, sure. versus non. There, there's a ratio. There, you know, I've been to schools where you know, there's like one black belt, and I've been to schools where three quarters of the students attending were black belts mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it definitely changed the dynamic of the school. Is that why you wanted to talk about this? Uh, yeah. Uh, this topic was, uh, it was raised with as, as guests might uh, and figure out that I hang out with other martial artists like <gasps> you guys. I know. Right. <laughs> uh, and my good friend, Angela, who has been discussed a few times on the show because yeah. she's a martial artist that is in my pod. My wife works with her. So she's in our group of friends that we, uh, you know, are, are staying around with right now. And so we discuss martial arts quite a bit and she brought up this topic idea and we you know discussed it at a, at a little bit and i said i don't want to talk about it too much right now i need to think about it more <laughs> but her her thought was what is a good proportion of black belts to non-black belt students in a school are you missing out by having all black belts and no under ranks or vice versa yes and so it definitely let well i, I would agree <laughs> but let's talk Show's about over. Why. Do, yes it matters goodbye <laughs> let's talk about why because yeah. you and I know why, but let's give something for our I listeners. I think there are a lot of reasons why. Think about. Oh, uh, I, absolutely. I think there are a lot of reasons. I think on the surface, I mean, if we take just the the perception issue, the, the feeling issue, I have been the lone lower rank student in a school with a bunch of high ranks, and I feel weird. It feels like I'm doing something that I shouldn't be doing yep. because apparently – Everyone who trains here is a senior student and I'm not. So what does everyone else who's tried and quit figured out that I haven't? On the flip side, when I've been one of those black belts and there are no lower ranks, it becomes this echo chamber. You forget how to teach. You forget nuance and, and how to break things down. Oh, so you know how in this black belt form we do this crazy, super duper jumpy thing? 
yeah, let's just do that 400 times. Okay. You know, and it just, it's, if martial arts is about growth and progress, which, which I feel it is. And I, I think no matter how you look at it, you're trying to get better, right? So there's a, there's a, a an importance placed on growth. If you struggle to see and thus have a harder time remembering where you came from or where you were, can go, I, I think that that limits the the opportunities for you. Even you as the say white belt, lower rank in the back of the class. If everybody else is a high rank, it's going to be harder for you to progress. Now, there's something to be said. You're you're in a room of great martial artists, but are they? Is the class going to be catered to your growth or theirs? Yep, absolutely. Um, oh man, I, my, my my brain's going in four different directions. Yeah, just pick um, one. Absolutely. I mean, the, the instructor is going to teach to the. I mean, sh an instructor should teach to uh, a medium ground, right? So something for the lower students to kind of mm -hmm. rise up to, and you know, some stuff that the upper rank students will still get something out of. But mm -hmm. if you're if you have a instructor who's teaching a class of let's let's put numbers on it 15 black belts and one white belt right you know what what kind of class is that go instructor going to teach he's going to teach likely to the highest common denominator you know in terms of numbers of students yeah um or what will end up happening is the one white belt will go off with maybe one of the black belts to work separately but now they feel excluded because 99% of the class is in a separate room. Mm. And so I think it, it could for sure be pretty harmful to be in that type of situation and scenario. Yeah. Yeah. I, if not harmful, at the very least, not as advantageous. Yeah. And I think it's important to recognize that. Now, should we talk? I, I don't think we should open the conversation to how to prevent that. I think that's a whole different subject. I think yeah, today... We don't know how. We well, I, I got a, I got ideas. Yeah, but it, but it's it's the intent of today is to get you to take a look at what your student body is made up of, rank wise, and determine is that a healthy mix. Mm -hmm. You know, in any in any complex system, it is you will not find long term sustainable benefit to. A lack of diversity. Yep. If you talk about gardening and monocropping, we're starting to see some of the pitfalls of that. If you look at, uh, there, there are studies showing in corporate environments that diversity in every way you could interpret that word leads to better decisions and better outcomes and e even better financial metrics. Yep. When we have all black belts, all white belts, all blue belts. It doesn't matter. You know, if everybody's at the same place, there can be some benefit in teaching, but long-term sustainability. There's a reason that in most martial arts schools, we have mixed classes. Mm -hmm. And if you look at older accounts of the one room schoolhouse, there was a lot of advantage there. The fact that a teacher could teach the oldest students, and then they would teach the younger students. And anybody who's ever spent time teaching knows that teaching helps cement, reinforce what you're learning, right? Everybody wins. And that's kind of whether it's direct or indirect, that is one of the benefits of a mixed rank martial arts class. Yeah. And if you have lots of different ranks, it helps to show the lower rank students the di the differences of where you will be going sure if you only show them the end result it is very difficult for the student sometimes to s figure out how to get there but if you show them the end the result and then show them the step before it and then the step before that and the step before that it's much easier for them to gauge how to get to the end result yeah. I, I completely agree so the question is, is there more? Is there more that we need to say on this? Well, I mean, I think the other thing to consider is. Uh, no, I guess not. I mean, I was going to say. <laughs> uh, I was gonna we say don't have to end it if there's, if there's more to say. 
Well, I mean, I was going to say the opposite of like a class of lots of underranks and only one black belt or one, you know, that one senior fairly student. common. I, I've, yeah, I've it, been that that one. And what happens, what tends to happen is that that advanced rank, if that's the only class, that person's progress is generally limited mm-hmm. because Absolutely. they're spending their time teaching more fundamental material. And not that there isn't benefit in that. There's incredible benefit in that. But if you, I've known people who have been at their senior rank for years and not learned the new material that they are expected to learn because they are not given those opportunities. It requires, I, I think as an instructor, a senior instructor, if you're the one in charge of the class and curriculum, having a mix, if assuming that you in your school have breakout groups, and most martial arts schools I've been in will break out, you know, okay. Uh, Sue, I was trying to use a different name because a couple episodes ago, we, we I used Sue. <laughs> We're recording these on the same day. Sue, go take the green belts. And Tom, go take the blue belts. And Andrea, take the red belts, right? Like you start to break out like that. But if you don't have enough black belts to do that, or too many things get a little jumbly. Yeah. Having a mix is good. Having a mix is good. Now the, the premise in the question had to do with a ratio. Can we say definitively that there is a healthy ratio? Oh, I don't know. I don't know that we could. Um, I mean, my, my gut, my gut goes to a quarter and three quarters. Hmm. I don't know why. I, I could see that. I, I think there's definitely flexibility, and I think it depends on rate of progress. You know, mm-hmm. you have some schools where there's more time between ranks than others. And I think we know that, you know, it's not quite a pyramid, you know, that we don't always have the most white belts and, and we have attrition off. You know, there's always going to be attrition. But some there's a something I want to point out, there's a phenomenon that I've witnessed that I think is relevant to mention here that Andrew, I suspect you and most listeners have witnessed. When you have a group of people start at the same time, roughly the same time, even if they did not start together, if they didn't know each other, they tend to stick around longer. There is value. There is retention value. There is training value in having people that are your peers. There's the term used in gyms all the time, a workout buddy. Mm Mm-hmm. Same reason. If you start training and at more or less the same time, there are others that you can relate to, you tend to hold each other accountable, even if it's indirectly. Oh, you know, we were working on that thing last time and, you know, I'm a little sore, but I'm going to go. And that occurs regardless of rank. If we were to commission some big study, I suspect we would find that the, the, In schools that have less diversity, there would be less retention. Hmm. Yep, I see that. So, yeah. Maybe we'll do a follow-up episode on how to encourage diversity. And here's the short of it. You got to get people starting all the time. The things that are good for, for bringing students in are good for diversity, ultimately. But we can unpack that more. Anything else we want to add? No, I'm going to make a note for okay. do another episode Sounds on that. Sounds good. Let's do it. All right. Well, thanks for watching or listening or maybe even reading. If you're checking out the transcript of this episode, go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com for this and all of the other episodes, links and notes and photos and videos and all kinds of good stuff. And if you're up for supporting us and the work that we do, you have lots of options. You might consider buying one of our Amazon books, telling others about the show, or supporting us at Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash whistlekick. And remember, we have this incredible strength and conditioning program that doesn't require any equipment. It built just for martial artists and you can get it at whistlekick.com and you can use the code podcast15 to get 15% off that or another program or a shirt or something else. We want to hear your suggestions, guests, topics, whatever that feedback is. And you can find all of our social media with at whistlekick. My personal email, jeremy whistlekick.com. And so let's send it out until next time. Train hard, hard, smile, smile, and and have have a great great day. day.